Today we're gonna shed some light on the serializer component. This is one of the serializer, uh, I mean, this is one of the components that doesn't get recognized and doesn't get the recognition, to be honest, that it deserves. It's, uh, it's, it was trash when it came out, of course, with Symphony 2, but now it has improved like a, a billion times or whatever. It's, it's pretty great. It can do stuff that even the JMS serializer can do right now. So we're gonna take a look at this. And yeah, so basically what I was doing before uh, before I came, uh, I, came, I came up with this idea, I was uh, working on the REST tutorial, I was uh, putting everything together, um, you know, googling some stuff, and then I then I saw that, uh, you know, the, the FOSS bundle, uh, the REST bundle uses serializer, so I thought maybe we're gonna cover this, so people in the future, when, when we get to that point, when we can use our REST API and all that, people gonna know how to handle different stuff. So we're gonna start, uh, and one more thing I wanna mention, I'm sorry if I'm not making enough videos and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not responding to all the comments and all the emails. Um, uh, I have a full-time job, so that takes most of my time. I have a life, to be honest, and I'm still young. I'm not that old to make all these videos. And, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep up with all this, but, yeah, that's this is by far this is the best I can do. Now, we're going to start talking about the serializer itself. Uh, so... Basically, this is gonna, probably going to be a multi-part video, so bear with me. And uh, what is serialization first? Serialization is the process of turning something into something. Let's see what Google, what Google is going to tell us about that. I'm going to open up a new window. Let's do Google and let's do serialization. And serialization is the process of converting an object into a stream of bytes to store and then transmit into memory database of a file it meant for it to the state of the object is a large library we really need a response called deserialization. Okay, so that is fair enough. It's the same thing. We're gonna take something, we're gonna serialize it uh, to another format, and then uh, the opposite, you know, the reverse process is called deserialization, obviously. So why do we need it? Basically, let's say we have the, like this, a C-sharp application and you want to send some data. You are doing ASP and you want to send some data to the Java, to JavaScript. So, I mean, there are different languages. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find something common between those. For example, binary is common between all, basically all languages. So you can serialize to that or you can serialize to something called JSON, which probably most languages support. You have XML, which is pretty old and nobody uses it anymore. I mean, probably some people use it, but yeah, not 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 the new, not the millennials as they call it. So that's uh, why we need it. So some example cases. I mean, Ajax, you've done you've done it before. For for example, PHP, you send an Ajax request, you get some JSON, and you decode that JSON, whatever, and you you can use it in JavaScript, like in array objects, whatever. And so. Uh, let's uh, let's cover the serialize function. I'm just gonna go through this because uh, in case you don't uh, know this, the PHP has the serialize and unserialize functions, but they are pretty limited, and you cannot you know configure them and all that. You have to do everything yourself. They feed it the data that is going to serialize, and that's it. That's pretty much all you're gonna get from these functions: serialize and unserialize. You can do it when you are, for example, uh, setting you know serializing the user into this session or something. But for, for something like an API, you're going to need something more than that. And that's where this component, the, serializer, the Symphony Serializer component comes in and GMS Serializer. I'm not going to compare between those two, but yeah, I'm just mentioning some names and all that. So what we want to do right now is that we might want to go ahead and start doing some stuff because this is going to be a lot, there is a lot to talk about. I'm probably not going to cover every single bit of this, but we're going to do our best. So the first thing we're going to do is let me just show you a basic serialization process. So we're gonna do something like post equals new post and we're gonna create this right here. I'm not gonna save anything into the database. I'm just doing some, let me show you first the post what we have in that. So I have an ID, a title and a content. That's it, pretty basic. So let's set the title to uh, overseas media or something. It's pretty cold. So I'm gonna make a lot of typos. So let's set the content. is trash as usual and then what we want to do let's get rid of this we don't really need this and we don't need this too. so i'm going to get rid of this and i'm going to feed this to the json and i'm going to show you what i'm going to get so this is the home i'm probably going to need to install a server and so let's do a server 
run. Yeah, I'm just gonna do PHP local host like that. My T public because I'm not gonna need a lot of stuff. So that is gonna work, obviously. Let's do okay, let's do local fucking. There you go. Let's go to the home and I'm gonna hit enter. As you can see, we got nothing. The first thing you need to remember about this, so let's first take a look. Uh, yeah, let, let me just explain this. So we, we are seeing no data because by default, this is going to only serialize the public properties. And as you can see right here, everything is private. It's not gonna use the getters and setters that we're gonna get to in the next minute or so. But as you can see, everything is uh, private. If you want this to be serialized, you have, and let me show you first the, with the function what it does. So this JSON, all it's gonna do is gonna check if we have a serializer installed. In this case, we do not have that. We're gonna do that in a second. Otherwise, it's gonna return a, a JSON response and it's gonna pass it the data. And by default, it's gonna only cover, uh, it's going to only serialize the properties that are public. It's not gonna modify the, uh, it's not gonna, you know, uh, serialize the, the properties with a modifier of public uh, or protected or uh, private so we got that of the way uh, right now we don't have the serializer installed we're going to do that in a second so if we le let's let's see that in action let's change this private to public the title and when i'm and uh, when i refresh this you're going to see i'm going to get the title but it's it's not a good thing to just change this to public of course obviously and yeah so right now, I think uh, we can go ahead and, you know, install the serializer without wasting any more time. So I'm going to just open, what is this? Uh, this is useless. I'm going to close that. And let's do PHP bin. No, no. Uh, what I want to do. Uh, composer require and serializer like that. All right, so we have that. We got uh, our serializer installed. Let's see if we just refresh this, what, uh, what we're gonna get. So I'm gonna refresh this. And as you can see, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna give me some data. So the serializer does not work as the JSON data, obviously, as you can see right here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, what do we wanna do? I don't know so there's a lot to cover to be honest and I'm kind of confused what I want to go through and the stuff that I want to you know just want to mention but yeah first of all let's take a look at the JSON with the serials that are installed so as you're gonna see it's indexed and some stuff and let's open that up and as you can see we have this uh, serializer inside the container we're gonna get that and we're gonna use the serialize function we're gonna pass it data and JSON and that's all we're gonna pass and of course we have a context which we're gonna talk about in a second now this is by default this is like the 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 function to only convert uh, that only encodes this stuff to serialize this stuff into JSON but you should know that we can do other pro uh, other stuff you can pass other formats and all that and i'm going to show you right here just quickly how you can pass uh, some uh, how you can create your own serializer and pass it some stuff if you want to just use the current serializer that we have right here you can just inject the serializer interface right here we're going to do that when we try to de serialize some stuff but for now we're just going to go ahead and do that so first i'm going to open up the mm, let me just use this page so let's do symphony serializer like that i'm gonna open up this and the first thing uh, the only thing that i want to show you right here is there's something i have something right here that is blocking me from using this area right here i have no idea what's that i'm just gonna ignore it for a second hopefully that's not gonna bother us the rest of the, the video but yeah so we have this right here that i want you to take a look at so you can go ahead and check the documentation it's pretty awesome it's pretty exp uh, explanatory it has it explains basically everything we're gonna cover most of this those stuff uh, but yeah what we have right here is the flow for from going in from an object into a json format xml csv whatever so obviously going from object into that specific format is called serialization and uh, in the process we have normalizing and encoding the reverse process is called deserialization uh, deserialization we're going to deserialize that first we're going to decode it into an array and then we're going to denormalize that array into an object so obviously it's it's using an array because this object it doesn't know how your object is constructed whatever we have properties and all that but an array it has keys and values and that's pretty much it 
and that's uh, yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show you right here so to normalize from we can norm we have a bunch of normalizers let's take a look at those let's see what we have so we have the encoders we have the normalizers we have a bunch of normalizers of course and you can create your own i'm not going to create any custom encoders in this but you can go ahead and check the documentation if you want to create your own first we have the object normalizer which which uses the property access component to use this uh, to you know to access the properties and all that to so getters setters hazards uh, hazards all those functions that start with has role or has uh, something and yeah so that's that's the object normalizer we have the get set which uses the getters and setters and uh, what do we have so we have the property normalizer which we're gonna probably i think we're gonna use that in when try to deserialize some complex json we have the json the dot time format data uri and we have the date time the uh, date interval and you can create obviously your own the second thing we have is encoders which are obviously json xml yaml csv as we saw and you can create your own i'm not going to do that as i said but yeah, let's go ahead and create our serializer. Those, the normalizers and, uh, and encoders are required to make your own serializer. So let's go ahead and create like a serializer right here. I'm just gonna get rid of this code obviously because I'm just trying to show you how we can do that. So let's do a new serializer right here. And as you're gonna see, if we go to the definition, you can see this takes an array of normalizers and encoders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an array of normalizers right here so let's do normalizers like that new not new but an array and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do new object object normalizer just like that that's all i need for normalizers and i'm going to do encoders so encoders like that it's an array and close that and i'm going to use json obviously i can use xml whatever i'm going to use json so let's do new json encoder like that and that's all i'm gonna need just to show you how this stuff works so let's pass the normalizer right here okay normalizer like that and the array of encoders so you you can't just do new encoder right here you have to put that in an array you can do that in line but i'm just doing this for simplicity so we can use that so we can use that right now so what we can do is we can do like uh, serialized data uh, equal uh, the serializer that we got so serializer and we can serialize that so we have these serializers of course but yeah we're gonna use that uh, we're gonna cover that in in a bit so let's continue our serialization process the first thing you have to pass right here is the data so the data in this case is the post so let's pass the post like that the second thing we have is the format. We're gonna pass JSON like that. Uh, if you take a look at the definition, the signature of this function serialize, you can see we have the data, the format, and the context. The context is where you pass most of your configuration and your options. For example, I'm gonna show you one right now. And just to show you the use of the, con uh, the context. So first, I'm gonna just var dump this. I have the I don't have the dumper of a component installed so let's just do dump die and i'm gonna refresh this so as you can see we have the null it's uh, the id null title obviously is media the content is trash that's great so that's what we want we get the serialization and all that and we have something let me just put an echo right here so let's do three no 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 yes just so we can see it right so it didn't work it doesn't matter so uh, one use of the of this context that we have right here uh, is for example let's say we want to get rid of the null that nulls all the null values that we have we don't want to display those so you can do that uh, i'm going to do something right now but i'm going to show you why you should uh, another uh, another way of doing it because uh, for example there's something called skip null values i think it's called skip null values what the fuck? now i'm gonna set this to true okay so once i do that when i go ahead and refresh this you're gonna see i'm gonna get rid of all the null values that i have right here pretty cool something you cannot do when you are using this serialized function of plain php uh, uh, what i'm talking about is this in the the new change log and for symphony 4.2 you have to use something like this object normalizer for example I can just 
right the fucking thing right click object normalizer like that and you have to use some constants for example skip skip null values skip null values groups and all that we're gonna handle most of these stuff right here uh, in a minute so yeah we're gonna use php storm obviously so if i do something like that you know it's gonna work the same thing so that's how you create your own serializer and all that um most of, the, uh, most of the time when you're going to see the documentation this is uh, assuming that you are not using symphony uh, you are not using the component inside symphony so you're going to see a lot of this inline stuff so as you can see uh, it's it's uh, so yeah it's not in our case we are using symphony we're going to use the framework and all the, the yaml configuration services and all that but in this case it's assuming you are not doing any of that so what I'm gonna do is, um, I think this is pretty fine. I showed you most of the stuff that you need. So I'm just gonna comment this and I'm gonna get rid of this. And we're just gonna keep using the, the JSON. So as you can see, JSON takes the same thing. It takes a status code, 200, arrays, uh, array of headers. And the last thing is the context, which is the same thing as the context that we use right here. So let me show you that. So for example, if I refresh this, we have that null value so i'm gonna pass 200 actually i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna use the response so let me just come on i'm gonna use response http foundation http okay and i'm gonna pass an array of empty headers uh, an empty header an empty array of headers and the last thing is the context so let's do that let's do object normalizer and skip null values that needs to be uppercase and let's set that to true so as you can see, it's gonna be the same thing. What the fuck happened? No, not that. Come on, come on, come on. You're gonna see the same thing. So this context is the same as that one before. Uh, what do we wanna do right now? So let me just see. Uh, I think it's pretty fair to go over some 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 of the options that we have right here. So we have the skip null values. We have something called called groups so groups you can specify them in the normalizer as you can see right here let's go back to that example i shouldn't have gone over it like that uh, let's see what do we have groups groups are pretty awesome i'm going to show you that in a second which group do we want yeah groups as you can see when we are normalizing or denormalizing and all that you can specify that right here